thank you, Dr. Falco. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the third edition of Knowledge Summit 2021. Before we go any further, I would like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Rajni Bachwani, and I'm going to take you through different sessions that we have planned for today, day one of this event. Uh, just to recall you the lineup of events, we will have today a plenary session on Indo-French scientific cooperation, followed by two panel discussions on open science and health and society. We will also have a keynote lecture on mathematics and AI by Professor Chiranjeev Bhattacharya. To begin with a plenary session, we have with us three eminent speakers who will share their thoughts on Indo-French cooperation in science and technology over the years and cover some broad scientific themes from both a historical and contemporary perspective. Before we dive into the session, I will quickly introduce you to our speakers. We are very honored to have with us today Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Dr. Nicola Ghirati, Deputy Counselor for Education, Science and Culture, Embassy of France in India, and Dr. Poonima Rupal, Director of the Indo-French Center for the Promotion of Advanced Research. Before I invite our speakers, I would like to um, let our audience know that there's going to be a Q&A session towards the end of um, you know, uh, the panel discussion. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the uh, ask for your questions tab, which is on the right hand side of your screen. And we'll take those up later. Without any further delay, I will now give the floor to our first speaker, Professor Vijay Raghavan. Over to you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Ms. Rajni Bhatwari. Um, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with my fellow panelists, Dr. Nicola Gerardi and Dr. Purnima Rupal. Uh, and I was really happy to listen to parts of the previous session where the French minister, uh, Mrs. Frederic Vidal, uh, and our uh, education minister, and Dr. Ravi Chandran, uh, Dr. Nitin Karmalkar, the vice chancellor, spoke about Indo French collaborations. Um, I will be very brief, uh, not because there is not much to say, but a lot of it was actually said so well in the previous session, and I look forward to listening to uh, Dr. Nicola Garaldi and Dr. Purnima Rupal uh, about what they want to do, but importantly, also to the more technical sessions on open science, health and society, and AI. Now, uh, there has been a very huge impact of collaborations with France over several decades, and we need to have a way of documenting that and seeing its value and putting it down. Uh, the, for example, the mathematics school at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in its early days, and this, this school became a very powerful and big school, globally recognized. In its early days, there was much collaboration between France and India, which resulted in many areas of specialization being developed in that school through its collaboration in France. So that's something which is not widely appreciated. Uh, and today, as India expands its footprint in science and technology, similar collaboration where Indian students go to France and French students and faculty come here on scale needs to be explored. What was done in one institution can now go on a larger uh, area of impact. Similarly, there's the uh, applied mathematics collaboration with France in Bangalore, the collaboration with, uh, you know, on um, water, which is very important. And most impressive has been the CEFIPRA, the Indo-French Center, which has seeded so many programs in a joint uh, manner. Now, the CEFIPRA program is well known amongst Indian academics, but in my opinion, this is now time for that program to be amplified on a much larger scale, getting in substantial resources, both from industry and philanthropy, along with government resources on both sides, to take on, in addition to the funding of joint projects, which is going really extremely well and is important for human resource development, programs which take on big missions together 
uh, and solves those problems need to be done. And that's an opportunity which the Indo-French Center might want to take up and put together in a functional manner. I should like to, in that context, say that India has put in place several major scientific missions, and those missions offer big areas of collaboration with France and indeed all of the EU. And this is something which again can be taken up. Let me list a few of those missions. One is a supercomputing mission jointly done by the Department of Science and Technology and the Ministry of IT. Uh, that's an area of very important collaboration in various levels of computing, in, including exo exascale computing. There is the artificial intelligence mission, which will roll out very shortly, as also the quantum mission. And there's a cyber physical mission of the Department of Science and Technology. These are all very important areas of potential collaboration. In 2015, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, and the then French President, Mr. Francois Hollande, uh, in their presence, a memorandum of understanding was signed between India and French institutions for collaborations in marine science and technology. Now, that's an area which now can be taken forward with great speed with the deep ocean mission having been rolled out by the Ministry of Earth Sciences. That the plan in that mission has an embedded French collaboration for setting up a marine technology center uh, in India and also collaborating with France in setting up marine laboratories, both in India and in France, in places such as Reunion. This is something which needs to be taken forward with speed. Another part of that program was a training program in data science for students in both countries to be taken up in collaboration. That also is something which now can be taken forward. So I'd like to end by saying that there, are, there is deep friendship and deep partnership between France and India, which goes across many sectors. Our partnership in science and technology over the decades, past several decades, has been very significant. But there is great opportunity for that to scale several fold. And that's the opportunity we must grasp now and take it forward. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Vijay Raghavan. I now invite Dr. Geradi uh, to start with his presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vijay Yaragavana. Thank you, Boni Marupal, the top Boni Marupal also. It's such an honor to be together with, uh, with you uh, this day, uh, today. Um, I would like to thank you, Professor Vijay Yaragavana, for the proposals and recommendations that you just uh, uh, gave and that I'm sure will be discussed deeply uh, in these uh, coming three days. Uh, I want also to thank uh, Dr. Rupal and CFIPRA in general for, for their involvement in the Indo-French scientific cooperations and uh, for their particular contribution uh, to this knowledge summit by uh, helping to organize the uh, AI workshop that will uh, take place uh, tomorrow. So uh, let me first uh, now start my presentation. So as recalled by uh, our Minister of AI Education, Research and Innovation, uh, India is a major partner of France and the strengthening of our university and scientific cooperation is a major axis of uh, the bilateral strategic partnership. Um, the purpose of my presentation is to provide a brief overview, if possible, of the scientific cooperation between France and India and to present the tools that the French government has put in place to encourage such cooperation. Uh, beforehand, and in particular for the attention of the Indian colleagues who are listening today, I would like to recall some facts and uh, figures concerning research in France. France, and uh, this is sometimes not known enough, uh, is indeed a major country in terms of research and innovation, and has always been. First, a few highlights. Um, 71 Nobel Prize winners we recently, for example, Madame Charpentier in 2020, Madame Duflo in 2019, or Mr. Moreau in 2018, making it the fourth country with the most Nobel recipients in the world. Perhaps even more impressive if you consider that France is just a country of 66 million inhabitants, 12 fields medals, making it in absolute the second most prolific country in the world. But the quality of research is obviously not uh, measured only by the number of international award winners. 
If we look at the impact of publications, for example, using the Nature Index, uh, which is, as you may know, on one indicator of instit institutional research performance, there France ranks sixth in the world, and the government's French National Science Center for Scientific Research, CNRS, ranks number two above, for example, the Max Planck Society and Harvard University. Innovation is not to be outdone. France thus ranks sixth in the world for the patent filing, second in Europe. These performances are the results of a proactive policy of the French government for investing, investing in research and development. This table on the left and this uh, feature, figure on the right make it possible to compare the performances of France with other countries. The table shows the gross domestic expenditure on R&D of the top 10 countries in the world. As you can see there, France um, will spend 67 billion US dollars, which means around 60 billion euros on R&D, which represents 2.25% of the GDP. It makes France the seventh country in the world which spends the most in R&D, and obviously with a very high percentage, percentage sorry, of its GDP. This data can also be found on, the, on this right graph, on the P figure, the graph on the right, sorry, which represent the number of researchers involved in R&D per million inhabitants and the percentage of the GDP spent on R&D. France here is in the middle, and the area of the circles represents the gross domestic expenditure on, on R&D. France is there with 2.25% of the GDP, as already said, and with almost 4,000 full-time researchers per million inhabitants, that is to say almost 300,000 researchers in total, of which 40% are working in the public sector and 60% in private sector. Speaking of researchers, I think it is interesting for our Indian colleagues to present uh, their working environment in France and the French specificity that are the UMR, Unité Mixte de Recherche, which can be translated as Joint Research Unit. Indeed, in France, the vast majority of the public research takes place in this type of units with more than 900 UMR in the country. These research centers have their own budget lines, staff assigned by specific partners involved, for example, CNRS, universities, and so on. These partners can be from the economic sector or from the CNRS, um, uh, or from the CNRS and or another uh, national research bodies, like for example, the INSEM for life sciences, plus generally uh, one university or a grand école. But the specificity also is that some private or even international partners can also be part of these research units, as well as non-academic partners like large corporates, uh, museums, uh, hospitals, for example. Altogether, there are common stakeholders in a common research center, which leads to very integrated centers of research with academia, research, and innovation at the same place. These units are truly the basic building block of the organization of research in France. But France is not resting on these achievements, of course. In order to maintain its place in the international competition, the French government promulgated a new important law at the end of 2020 dedicated to R&D. Here you have a few uh, flagships of this program, which provides an additional investment of 25 billion euros by 2030 for the academic sector. France obviously is part of Europe, and when we talk about research in France, we cannot fail to talk about the European programs. The new Horizon Europe 21-27 program, worth almost 100 billion euros between 2021 and 2027, invested in research and development and innovation. I obviously don't have time to get into details uh, of it, but you have here the structure of this program uh, with its three main pillars, pillar one, pillar two, pillar three, and in particular, the pillar number two, in which the Indian terms, team, sorry, can be integrated alongside European teams. I invite you to get, get in touch with the representatives of the European Commission in India on this topic. Also, to maintain its place among the world leaders in terms of research and development, France has made international collaboration a priority. As it can be seen on the left, 
France has long been a leader in terms of international co-publication with 66, 56% of scientific publications produced with a foreign research organization. These trends can also be seen when looking at the PhD students. Of the 70,000 PhD students during their thesis in France, 29,000 come from abroad, placing third France sorry, in the third position worldwide. I would like to note here that of these uh, 25, for 25,000 foreign doctoral students, only around 300 come from India. France relies on international cooperation because our differences, our respective approach are enriching the research activities. And France is therefore proud to award the scientists involved in this international cooperation with France. Among them, France regularly awarded some scientists for their involvement in Indo-French collaboration. And early this week, took place, for example, the medal ceremony for Professor Godbal from IISC Bangalore for her contribution to this field. France and India have got a long, a very long scientific cooperation history and much longer than what we sometimes think. I want to remind you some examples, some facts of these solid collaborative foundations during this opening day of the Third Knowledge Summit in order to inspire maybe the maximum of you to be involved in new collaboration. You probably all know how Jacques Blamont and Vikram Shabarai, uh, Sharabai sorry, have collaborated and contributed to the creation of ISRO, the Indian Space National Agency. This fruitful collaboration and strong friendship between the two men is still active today between our respective national space agencies, the CNES and ISRO. And I trust that India's ambitions with the human space program will lead to many new joint projects with France on that topic. Space partnership is well known, but maybe you don't know that uh, India and France are sharing a long and fruitful collaboration in the field of water, as it has been said just before. And uh, the Indo-French cell on water sciences created in 2001 in Bangalore as the long uh, term goal to conduct integrated studies pertaining to water and soils in India from local to subcontinent scales. We're just celebrating the 20 years anniversary of this structure, which is involving not less than 21 French partners in the new MOU recently signed with IAC in Bangalore. Among these partners, the French IRD, who is the historical partners, but also CNRS, INRAE, and so on. I can't detail this long history in each field, but let me add one more. France and India are both sharing a list and interest and maybe, should I say, a love for mathematics. I said it already, France has received 20 Fields Medals and our mathematicians have been collaborating very actively for decades with their Indian colleagues. It started very early and I can quote, for example, the Laboria, which became later the French INRIA, who has been in touch with the Tata Institute on Pure Mathematics programs in the 70s, when Jean-Louis Brion uh, was its first director and then president. This continues today with, for example, not only, but notably uh, for a joint lab such as IFCAM or RELAX. If you are interested in the history of scientific partnership between France and India, let me announce that we are preparing a big exhibition on that topic for early 2022 within the framework of the Bonjour India 20, 2022 festival. Today, sorry. Today, uh, France devotes nearly 5 million euros each year to scientific and technological cooperation with India, from direct funding coming from the ministries or uh, for funding coming from the research agencies, uh, French research agencies present in India. Regarding the co-publication between France and India, with almost 8% share of the number of Indian international co-publication, France is India's fifth scientific partner. There are approximately 600 active agreements between French and Indian higher education uh, institutions. And these agreements are most of the time student mobility agreements. But I know that more and more Indian and French institutions want to develop also research partnerships, strongly uh, structured. This is the reason why we are here together these days. And these research agreements can be strongly linked with the student mobility program and vice versa, especially when collaborating with France, since, as I said, the research unit in France are strongly interconnected with academia. 
There are almost 20 well-structured partnerships between French and Indian research institutions, and we hope new more in the near future. Apart this, there are almost 60 ongoing uh, projects funded through the CIFIPRA, the Indo-French Center for the Promotion of Advanced Researches, and uh, Dr. Ponima Rupal will talk about them later. Uh, last but not least, there are 28 private R&D centers for French companies and about 1,000 French companies present in India. I already said it, France's major research bodies operate widely abroad. In fact, in more than 250 locations around the world. In India, of course, many of them are present, and we even have permanent representatives based in India for fifth of these institutions. CNRS, with Dr. Srini Kaveri, that everybody, everybody knows already very well, I'm sure. IRD, with Dr. Marie-Hélène Zera. INHAE, with Dr. Edmond Rock. CNES, with Mathieu Weiss, sorry. And CEA, with Thomas Miosse. I sadly don't have time here to detail all the activities of the research organization which are present in India. I already talked a bit about CNRS, which of course is the major contributor of Indo-French Scientific Partnership. I talked also a bit already about IRD, INRIA, and CNES. Yves Romer has also some collaboration and probably much more coming in the near future within the deep ocean mission, for example, in the fields of the climate survey and spatial oceanography. In high, is also an important contributor, which, for example, with, for example, the launch of a living lab uh, entitled Climate Smart and Nutrition Sensitive Food System in the Karnataka. In CERN, has very long history of partnership with India with 34 active corporations in the fields, for example, of neurosciences. Once more, sorry that I can't detail more now, but we are preparing the synthetic documents that will be available soon on the website of the French City Institute in India. Today, we are together at the occasion of this third Knowledge Summit. The Knowledge Summit is an event allowing the meeting of the scientific communities in particular, but not only in priority themes of corporations. It aims it's, is to encourage, develop, facilitate the establishment of new contact and cooperation between public bodies, academic institutions, research laboratories, and so on and to formulate recommendations. Then we have the Indo-French Joint Committee on Science and Technology, which has been created in 2016 and met last time in 2018. This dialogue at a more political level aims to define the scientific and technological priorities of Franco-Indian cooperation on the basis, basis sorry, of a regular review of existing cooperation activities and recommendations done thanks to the Knowledge Summit. It formulates recommendations and guidelines on operation, operational modalities to facilitate Franco-Indian cooperation in science and technology and innovation, including strengthening the role of the CIFIPRA. The CIFIPRA itself then, I won't detail its role since Dr. Punima Rupal will speak just after, but with a global endowment of more than 3 million euros per year granted equally by the French and Indian governments, it funds and supports research projects and the mobility of students and researchers between the two countries, and it should ideally co coordinate its action with the Knowledge Summit and the Joint Committee for Science and Technology. Before finishing, I wish to briefly present some of the actions supported by the French government to encourage these scientific partnerships. First is PhD thesis, PhD doctoral funding. I said it already, very few Indian students go and do their PhD in France, although there are a huge amount of doctoral funding each year provided by the Ministry of Higher Education, Research and Innovation, without even talking about the other sources of funding from research institutions, French national research agencies, companies, and so on. Um, once more, we have also this short mobility program and scholarships at master level, at doctoral level with the Raman Shapak scholarships provided through the CEPIPRA, FL scholarships, and I want to announce also that we will next year launch a new short mobility program for research and professors uh, from, from uh, Indian and French universities. I said it also, uh, we have 28 uh, R&D uh, centers of French companies present in India, and so we also worked on R&D club and its, um, and its uh, continuation, which is the Indo-French Innovation Web Network, in which we uh, aim to discuss, uh, make discussion between these companies, academia, 
and uh, in order to, to uh, settle new projects which can be funded, for example, in the two plus two uh, call for project from the CEFIPRA. Once more, I don't have time to detail, but uh, for any question, don't hesitate to go and visit our website and connect with our team, which is based in Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, and Kolkata. I take this opportunity also to quote that within the French research network in India, France has also two very important French institutes of research based in Delhi, the CSH, Center for Human Sciences, Center for Centre de Sciences Humaines, sorry, and in Pondicherry, Institut Francais Pondicherry. These laboratories host researchers from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, CNRS, ID, INRAE, and researchers which are recruited locally. And obviously, they are playing an important role in doctoral research between our two countries, in particular, but not only in the fields of humanity and social sciences. IFP will lead a session tomorrow on coastal transformations within the workshop dedicated to marine sciences. Thank you very much for your attention. Don't hesitate to visit our website for more uh, detailed information. Thank you. Uh, I now I now invite um, Dr. Punima Rupal to give her presentation. Thank you. A very good afternoon to uh, participants in India and uh, bonjour, good morning to the participants in France. Uh, respected Professor Vijay uh, Dr. Nicola and distinguished participants. I will just take you through uh, the presentation on CEFIPRA. I'm Dr. Purnima Rupal, the director of indo French Center for the Promotion of Advanced Research, or popularly known as CEFIPRA, so on the franco andean pour la promotion de la recherche avancée. Uh, next, could I just move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, the mandate, uh, the idea of this center was uh, generated sometime in the 1980s, early 1980s, and the center was set up in 1987 uh, by the two governments to promote scientific cooperation between the two countries by acting as a catalyst in strengthening collaboration and industrial research in cutting edge areas of science and technology across the knowledge innovation chain uh, and for human resource development. Next. Uh, so coming uh, 34 years into our uh, evolution, I can say we've come a long way and uh, uh, you know, aligned ourselves to the changing times. Uh, so growing from people to people interaction in the 1987 to institutional linkages that we have established as of today, Sefipra has redefined its role from being a funder to facilitator or catalyst now while strengthening its program profile across the knowledge innovation chain. CEFIPRA acts as a single window for the scientific community, for the two countries, for scientists of the two countries, for providing R&D grants, and thereby you know, create a, uh, providing greater visibility, easy, easier monitoring and control. So there's also a lot of flexibility in the administrative procedures for the both countries. And the focus is obviously on high level research and development. CEFIPRA has evolved and launched a comprehensive strategy to address the industrial competitiveness and R&D led innovation. Could we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So uh, as I said, uh, the programs of CEFIPRA are cut across the knowledge innovation chain. So building on uh, the uh, so a collaborative scientific research program, uh, uh, CSRP as it's popularly known, uh, 15 years into it, we have moved on to promote the industry academia linkages program. And we also support se seminars and workshops under both the formats. Besides this, there are the targeted programs uh, initiated by the two fund funding agencies of the two countries which are also implemented by CEFIPRA. There is the annual lecture series and uh, involvement of SMEs and industry under the industry academia and uh, dedicated mobility programs called uh, the Raman Sharpak Fellowship. There are some others uh, like the Soleil, which is over now, but CEFIPRA ESON. I will come to the details of this a little later. 
and also we've dedicated the program for the women uh, postdoctoral fellowship program, which has recently been launched. Uh, could we move to the next one? I'm not going into the details because of paucity of time. Uh, so just putting it up in numbers since its inception, we have, uh, you know, Oh, completed over 580 uh, projects, collaborative scientific research projects, over 40 industrial projects, uh, seminars and workshops, uh, over around 200 have been supported under this. And these have resulted in joint publications of great Im uh, impact uh, uh, with average impact factor of over 4.5. Uh, with the high citations received, uh, more than 70,000 publications. And uh, human resource trained is over 3,400, which includes uh, 1,100 PhDs and postdocs as well. So we've, uh, the, the, this has impacted in strengthening the institutional linkages. Over 165 research, Indian research institutes have been connected to more than 80 French institutes. Uh, under these programs. Uh, and of course, the mobility supported is over 4,000. In addition to this, in terms of the technological outputs produced is uh, over five processes, designs, products, and patents also through our programs. Next one, please. So under the major programs, which are called the core programs of CEFPRA, the first one being the collaborative scientific research programs uh, both these programs, uh, we invite proposals under these programs through online system uh, twice a year. It is 15th and uh, January and July for the collaborative scientific research program and the industry academia, similarly, twice a year. Under both the formats, uh, we also support some seminars and workshop proposals with the same deadlines. So that's the portal, as you see here, uh, it's very much available on the website. This is, I thought it was necessary to just share it with the participants, those who are interested. We could take specific questions later. Uh, so could we move to the next one, please? So the, there is a whole lot of areas covered under the proposals being the you know, call for proposals. In one area, in one call, we limit it to the general areas, whereas the second call is dedicated for thematic areas. In the current uh, call, uh, the thematic call, it is, uh, these are the areas listed here. I won't go into this, but particularly just mentioning the AI and big data. So as a part of that, we are also doing something, some initiatives, uh, we will list, list those a little later. Could we move to the next one, please? So the Industry Academia Research and Development Program, it was felt necessary to move from the supporting fundamental science of high impact so as to, with an aim to, you know, build linkages between industry and research institutes of both the countries, aligning it with the, the national initiatives of the two countries by leveraging the research skills of the research institutes uh, to enhance the competitiveness of the industrial partners in the two countries. So in this, uh, we have industry-led programs, uh, proposals, uh, which are supported, and these are, uh, they, they are of high impact. We will come to some of the success stories emanating from these programs. So could we move to the next one, please? Uh, yes, so I just won't have time to go through these uh, success stories, but uh, just mentioning one here, there are several of these. Uh, we didn't have, uh, you know, the time to list all of these. Uh, so the low cost manufacturing of a WHO essential drug, misoprostol, by Avra Labs in India, which is an antiabortic now commercially available in many nations at a very affordable cost, was developed under a project which actually was translated from a fundamental research project to the industry-led project. Uh, so between the CSR, IICT Hyderabad and University of Rennes uh, under the CNRS. So these are some of the products. So we could go to the next one, uh, which also lists a few more uh, success uh, stories. Uh, some of it are 
uh, a novel approach using high order SH ultrasonic wave modes generated using EMAT developed for quality assurance of adhesive bonded structures, a uh, specific platform for dynamic resiliency analysis, dual anti cancer drugs, uh, phosphorus dendrimers, uh, for, uh, which have a potential for curing TB2, uh, and several others. So this is just to give you a glimpse of, you know, the kind of uh, products emanating from our industry programs. And taking you to the next slide is about our seminars and workshops and training schools that are supported under both the formats. Uh, the financial support, uh, so, you know, given for such workshops is um, at the level of uh, 25,000 euros approximately 20 lakhs of rupees. So, and uh, these are conducted under both the formats, as I said, both in India and France. And the proposals, uh, details of which can be had from the website. Uh, could we move to the next one? Uh, coming to the um, um, dedicated the fellowship program of the center, which is named the Ramon Sharpak Fellowship. It was launched in 2013 with an objective of uh, facilitating exchange of doctoral students between the two countries. So obviously, uh, as we had expected, uh, we did not have the same numbers of French students coming in. So subsequently, we, we also extend, we in, intended to include French master students into this program, which is actually address the asymmetry that we'd observed in the, the number of uh, fellows in each countries. So this is funded by the DST on the Indian side and the French embassy uh, on the French side. And uh, this is, uh, we've, under this program, uh, over 175 fellows have been supported as of now. And uh, this year we could not make a call, but definitely the call will be out very soon uh, for those of you who'd like to apply for this. So uh, I just can give you a few more details about this fellowship in the next slide, if time permits, yes. So the target group for this fellowship is uh, the PhD scholars and including the master students in France. It's a short term fellowship. Uh, so any of the areas um, uh, they want to uh, pursue research in is covered under this. Eligibility age is 30 years. Application procedure can be looked online. The fellowship uh, support is generous uh, for you know a comfortable stay and the research uh, facilities in both the countries and the launching time is sometime in April with the deadline of uh, summer so that the results are announced sometime in September or October and the fellowship can begin from October to November. So this year I think we hope to co correct the schedule which went a little haywire due to the pandemic as did several other programs. So beyond this, uh, I can take you to some of the targeted programs implemented by the center. Could we move to the next one, please? So DST, the, there's a program between the Department of Science and Technology, INDRIA and uh, CNRS together, it launched in 2013. This in the areas identified for joint implementation were AI, big data, and all these listed here. Uh, there are several good projects which are supported under this. Uh, so currently there are six ongoing and the last call for this year just closed on 7th October and hopefully we'll be supporting a few more projects under this. Uh, next one, the C DST and CNRS have lost Another call, uh, which is being implemented through the center. And these are in different areas than the ones uh, earlier. These are uh, listed here. And we have four ongoing projects uh, under this. And hopefully we will be supporting more, the, more of these projects. I can take you, uh, we, I'd like to mention here about another very interesting uh, fellowship uh, dedicated for Indian students. Can we move to the next slide, please? It's Sefipra Esson Fellowship, which is the European School of Nanosciences and Nanotechnology. So, so Indian PhD students registered in the Indian universities can avail of this fellowship. The application is uh, you know, to be registered on the Esson website and subsequently those who um, are 
you know, taken for the program uh, can apply for the fellowship support and which uh, includes uh, the fee and the travel support, including an uh, subs subsistence allowance. So the timeline for this is mentioned here, but uh, more details can be had from the website. Uh, moving to another uh, fellowship program, the Human Resource Development, a program dedicated to uh, young women. So the objective of this uh, postdoctoral fellowship program was to provide the women scientists opportunities for international collaborative research and thereby furthering their research capacity and global perspective and forging uh, long-term relationships between uh, scientists, technologists, and engineers of between the two countries. Uh, and this also is tenable at both the countries. The launching of the call is very soon going to open in January, uh, coming January, uh, with the deadlines shown here, the timeline shown here. And this is another one we will be taking up very shortly. So next. Uh, CEFIPRA has been associated with the, the, all the editions of the Knowledge Summits and uh, we've been contributing to this as uh, Nicola very generously mentioned. Um, so at the Knowledge Summit, first Knowledge Summit at Delhi, the one at Lyon and uh, next please. Uh, so the current edition of the Knowledge Summit uh, uh, we were, we've embedded the two workshops into this of artificial intelligence in health and agriculture in the next two days. So I'm grateful to the coordinators for putting it up and they will be 27 speakers uh, with four parallel sessions dedicated to the themes mentioned here. Next. Uh, I think it's very gratifying to see our role being appreciated at the highest levels. So CEFIPRA does find a mention in all the joint statements of the highest state level visits that have take place between the two countries. And we are also very grateful to the support uh, of the two uh, you know, governments for uh, the center. And as mentioned by uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan, I think we need to now move on to, uh, so we will take that uh, advice of moving into uh, you know, joint initiatives, larger initiatives than the project mode and the industry projects that we've been uh, you know, setting up and the linkages that uh, has come out of these uh, great uh, center um, established by the two governments. I think this is the first uh, center that uh, India set up with any country, physical center with France. And this is the only center France has with any other country uh, outside India, so uh, outside mm -hmm. France. So thank you very much uh, for this. And next, we just end it with this. So I'm sure it will go a long way to contribute to the Indo-French uh, scientific and research and innovation, con innovation cooperation between the two countries. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, great discussion. We will now open uh, the floor for Q&A &A, uh, session. Uh, I do see some questions uh, here. Uh, probably in the interest of time, I'll take uh, one or two questions. Um, so the first question that we have uh, uh, is uh, you for, for, for uh, Dr. Gerardi, uh, you announced a new short mobility program for researchers and professors. Uh, could you uh, tell us more on this? Dr. Gerardi? Dr. Giradi, you'll, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yes, but I couldn't unmute myself, sorry. So uh, thank you so much, Rajni, for, for this question. Thank you. Yes, I will be brief. Uh, indeed, there is, this is something which is which is still missing, I think, in the tools that we have uh, for the for, in, for initiating some new corporations. So uh, from next year, we decided, French Embassy in India, to uh, uh, launch a program which will allow uh, the, uh, Indian uh, researchers to go to France and maybe discover a new partnership. Uh, so if they have one 
laboratory that, that they don't really know very well, they want to, to try with them. They will allow, this, part, this program will allow them to go and uh, visit this uh, laboratory for three or four days, and the same in the, in the other way. So from French researchers who can come and discover, I would say, the Indian uh, research landscape. So we will uh, announce that at the beginning of 2022, there will be a call for project open for everybody, of course, and uh, a selection of the best proposals so that uh, we can ignite new cooperation for people who maybe doesn't know them already very well, each other. This is the idea. Thank you, Dr. Um, Gerardi. Um, before we close the session, I'll take uh, one last question. Uh, this is for Dr. This is for Professor Vijay Raghavan. Uh, in the background of a number of mutual interest between both countries, how can we involve different government agencies in the context of SEFIPRA? Will it be DST or uh, is it possible to integrate others like DBT, uh, etc.? Um, thank you very much. Um, so this is an interesting question. Uh, basically, you're saying that there are multiple agencies involved at this end, and indeed there are multiple agencies involved at the French end. I think, you know, people such as Dr. Purnima Rupal, Dr. Varshne at our end, uh, the DST is the node for integrating all of international collaborations. So they will keep the antennae out and bring together all possibilities. And indeed, when we have exchange visits, we discuss with all the agencies coming together. More recently, Dr. Varshne has been discussing potential collaboration in the light of a high level French visit uh, with all the agencies. So while the agencies will of course have their interactions, the Department of Science and Technology will uh, be the node into ensuring that all agencies are involved. Thank you, Professor uh, Vijay Raghavan for this. Um, with this, we, will now come, uh, we have now come to the end of uh, the plenary session. Uh, uh, I once again thank the speakers and our audience uh, for their prompt participation during uh, the session.